Hey there, it's Margaret from Days Well Spent. And in today's workshop, we're gonna show you how to build a sturdy tomato cage. You're going to need your cattle panel. You're gonna need some bolt cutters, a grinder, some wire cutters, and then you're gonna need some wire. We're going with a 17 gauge wire. So he's cutting it and he moved over eight spaces. So next he's going to cut off those extra pieces that, that are sticking out from the previous cut. And from each panel we're able to get one large and two small cages. Before we start to fold this over into a circle, we want to cut the, uh, the sharp edges off both sides because the two edges are going to be touching. Okay, now on the cattle panel, you've got some, some sections that are closer just at the very top. So I use those for the top of my cattle or my tomato cage. There's a reason for that, and that that'll come in evident later because when I make the the uh, the, the stand so that you can push it into the ground, I want the longer piece of metal at the bottom to be able to push it into the ground so that it doesn't uh, tip over later. What you're going to do is you're going to bend from every single section until you form this thing into a roll. It's a slow process, so just take your time with it. Okay, so first thing you do is you just cut, cut about three pieces of baling wire, maybe six inches long. And these are just going to be used temporarily to hold the cage together. Okay, the easiest way to do this is just pull it together now that you got your, uh, your, your round form. And if you need to get some help, you can. Then you take one of your uh, pieces of baling wire and you're just going to wrap it around in the middle. And that's going to hold it there in the middle. Then we're going to go and do the ends the same way. All right, so you're just going to reel off maybe six to eight feet of baling wire. And start at one end. I'm going to move this up and I'll show you why here in just a moment. So you're going to come in here. Hold it together real good. And it, it is a slow process because it's uh, kind of like weaving. I want to cut some off. I got a little bit too much. You've just got to keep rolling it around and work your way all the way down the seam to the bottom of the, uh, the, the cage. So then when you get down to the little piece that held it together, you can take that off now so it's not mixed up with the other one and then continue your wiring all the way down. Now at this point here, this is where you're going to want to do like a cross wire and that will hold the tomato cage from sliding out of place and not being squared up anymore. Now it can't slide and your top will be uh, even. In other words, you're going to continue down. Okay, once you get about two of these sections done, uh, you can go ahead and cut, cut it. Just leave a little tiny bit of tail. I mean, maybe an inch or two. And what you're going to do is you're going to slide it underneath the wire in that kind of that little edge right there. This will allow it to kind of finish out nice and it'll look good. And 
now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the other end we're going to do the same thing at the other end and then we'll work on the middle we're going to come to the uh, other end and do the same thing Now we're going to do the middle. Okay, so that middle section is coming up on a joint. So Scott's going to wrap it up, and that's going to be our end spot for the middle section. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to take the very bottom piece and we're just going to cut this section out. Uh, the other end has the uh, panels that are closer together and I like to keep those together without breaking them because it, it gives a lot of strength to that top section of the cage. So all we're going to do is we're going to cut out this, just the bottom row. All the way around. Now I could use the grinder on this, but I'm not going to. The reason being is when I push this tomato cage in the ground, I'm leaving this kind of rough edge because that helps it uh, stick into the ground better once it's in there and the soil settles and, and tightens up around it. It gives it a lot more stability in the ground than just a smooth uh, stake. When you get to the part where your wire is, don't worry about it, just cut it off just like you were the rest because your wire is in place holding the, uh, the cage together. Okay, at this point, your tomato cage is ready to uh, put over a tomato plant. All right, so you can see here we have a small tomato plant. We do companion plants, so we've got some other stuff coming up here around it that will be being trimmed back later. We like to do it when it's small because if you've ever tried to wrestle a large tomato plant with a lot of branches into a cage, it doesn't work, work very well. All right, so I like to go ahead and just move the mulch back out of the way. That way it doesn't get in the way when trying to put the cage down on it. And then Scott's just going to slide it down over the plant. And then as you can see, he's able to step on it because of the strength of the tomato cage. Doesn't have to worry about bending the legs of the cage. And now as our plant grows, it's going to have all the support that it needs. And at this point, we can go ahead and we can push our mulch back over it. If you have any questions along the way, let us know in the discussion section and we'd be happy to help. If you're looking for more inspiration for your garden and other projects, be sure to visit dayswellspent.com 